Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Traders, Steve here at Logic FX Trading. And welcome to our trading room summary on Friday the 3rd of April 2020. Okay, let's just start with a quick look at the stock markets. Um, after our initial push up, we did say we'd be looking for some sort of corrective structure back down and see if they break out of that and go long. There is still a lot of talk out there about a bear market, guys, meaning that there could be more downside to this. But uh, what we'll just do is we'll trade what we see in front of us. So if this breaks out, then maybe we look to see if we can trade that up. I'm not expecting it to do that, guys. I'm just expecting it to maybe, you know, over a period of time, slowly but surely come up. Of course, if we go into the bear market, that bottom will be broken. And then we'll try and trade the same thing back up from there. And if that then pushes down again, then we'll try and trade it from there. But for now, we'll maybe look at this. Maybe it turns out to be a bit of a zigzag correction up to you know maybe 60 maybe 50 percent folks of the drop which would be yeah up and around there may happen may not happen guys i'm not necessarily going to try and trade these things but if i if i were to trade any of them from a technical point of view rather than a a uh, fundamental point of view because the fundamentals are all over the place at the moment but from a technical point of view this of all the markets seems to be the best we had a very impulsive move we've had a zigzag back down or maybe a little abc down it's come into the 61.8 if it breaks out of there guys if it sets that alarm off it might be worth looking at going long on it i would take small profits if i were you okay so that's the nifty sorry the nasdaq the Aussie doesn't look at such a good prospect so far as trying to get into it's concerned. Um, so I would look for a deeper pull down, maybe to break that bottom before trying to look uh, at trading that up. And what I've said here is, is of course, that isn't that isn't necessarily what's going to happen. I just put that in while we were talking in the trading room uh, that, of course, there was that possibility that it would just keep going. But... Um, for now, I wouldn't bother trying to trade that. It could go long, guys, but um, not a great setup. Uh, the German, the, the European bourses seem to be slightly better set up in that you had the little double top there and we've had a break at the bottom. Let's just see if any of these start to go long. I would try and trade one of them, not all of them. Uh, the French is the same. What we're saying here is you'd probably need to put your stop below the bottom there. To give yourself a chance just in case it it moves back down then of course uh, if it does that you always has to have the possibility that it will bounce off the bottom again guys so you know use your own trading strategy with these things um this could push down a little bit more and then go and of course it could just end up doing something like that so you're waiting for the breakout before you decide to get into these well, that's what I'd be doing, guys. That's uh, uh, UK index, same thing, guys. When we come up here, we were looking for a uh, a pullback. That's what we've got. Nice little, little zigzag. Might be a little bit more downside to it. But if they do start to go long, then it may well be worth trying to trade. Uh, at the, as, as I, I will I <laughs> pick a word. Um as I said earlier, I'm not trying to trade these all the way up at this stage, guys. Maybe just take a little bit of a profit out of them if and when you get them. Not so sure with this one because the structure is a little bit more difficult to uh, predict. Um, S&P, it isn't open at the moment, guys. But um, we'll just have a little look and see. They've all kind of got the same structure except the um, Nasdaq that's why I'm not so sure with this we've had a pullback maybe it gives us a little bit more downside and then it goes and the Dow Jones would be the same guys looks very similar so far as everything else is concerned uh, the dollar still pulling back I'm happier with this now guys because it could be a zigzag one two three four five and then falter and drop doesn't have to do it it could just climb on up but at this point, if it did fault and start to drop, I may think about trading it short. 
in which case you could go through all of the major pairs and look for opportunities, possibly long there. Uh, looking for this to go long off here. Aussie, looking for that to go long once it changes. Of course, it could just keep doing that, folks. But So we're talking about if they all turn and start to go up, then you're looking to... Um, you're looking to trade one of them, not all of them. Oil, I did call it long yesterday, guys, uh, with reservation, as I always do, because there's nothing definitive about trading. What I did say yesterday, where there were people calling it and saying it may go down as far as $10, but I thought that uh, the, the deal that they were talking about, that Trump was getting involved with, may well come off, and if it comes off, we will see oil over a long period of time getting back up into this area. Um, so I was long on this yesterday. I had a couple of trades in on it. They shot away up. Uh, unfortunately, the system wouldn't allow me to close them when they were up here. They come back down again. Still made a bit of a profit out of them, guys. Uh, I closed them because I said to myself, well, you get the initial spike, then you'll get a pullback, and then if it's going to go, it'll go. And I would then trade it from, well, well, it was there or there. I haven't got back into it yet because I'm not convinced that this is going to go again here. I'd prefer to see a bit more downside to it and then to see if it goes. Of course, it could go from here. Excuse me, folks, but I don't have a trading strategy to get involved there. But nonetheless, I would say oil would could probably continue long but not in a straight line, guys, obviously. Up and back and up and back and up and back. Now, off the back of that, what I did say was, if oil goes long, then look um, for CAD trades. Uh, so we'll just look at the CAD here, and then that will uh, do us for this. So, uh, sorry, CAD. So CAD yen dropped yesterday, and then there's the spike with the oil, and it's hanging about there kind of hoping that it maybe pulls back a little bit and then moves off. New Zealand CAD, uh, yeah, well, I wasn't so keen to trade this one, guys, because as you can see there, I was more or less saying these could balance each other out, so I didn't try and trade that one. Uh, CAD Swiss, yes, I did trade this one, um, uh, hoping that that's the bottom there, and we're slowly but surely coming up, and we got our little spike, there you have it, yesterday. Um, what other ones? Aussie CAD's not worth trying to trade. Pine CAD's not worth trying to trade at the minute. Um, not so keen on the Euro CAD, but the Euro CAD may well. Yeah, there's the spike down the Euro CAD. Um, I think that's more or less it for today, folks. Uh, Aussie New Zealand. Uh, we're getting a bit of a oh bit of a nasty little pullback there could turn out to be a bit more of a push down before it goes long um, I'm hoping that it's not I'm hoping that this just continues to go up uh, that's the direction we want I want to trade it by the way folks given how far down it's come I'm more or less saying that's the bottom so it should gradually and slowly and whatever get back up there again of course we know how these things move it could very easily come back down to give us a double bottom before it goes again. Not expecting that, and I'm certainly not trading it that way, but we know that, that it is a possibility. Can it break the bottom? Well, it can do whatever it wants, but I would think that that was pretty uh, improbable, guys, at this stage. Okay, that's uh, that'll do us for today. Have a great weekend, folks, and keep yourselves safe, and I'll see you all again on Monday. Bye for now.